Hey everybody, this is going to be my first shorter form video where I go over a concept that is not related to any one particular song, but is a cool thing or interesting thing that you might hear from music that's popular right now or was popular once upon a time. So with that, let's take a look at the way we put strings of minor chords together to create something that sounds like early 2000s D&B or jungle music that you'd probably hear in a PlayStation game. So the way this worked is in the early days of jungle and drum and bass music, you know, late 90s, This again, this sound that someone my age kind of associates with the sound of early PlayStation music, someone would take a sampler and they would take a what we call a one shot or a single chord sampled from a record or from a synthesizer or another keyboard and they'd pl place it into the sampler. So let's say we have a C minor 7th chord. So we start out with a C, and then we add an E flat, a G, our 3rd and our 5th, and then we add our minor 7th for C minor 7. So then our producer places that into a sampler, and what they can do is they can take that recording of the chord, and the sampler will pitch it up or down in half steps. Now, if you go towards the extreme low register, that's going to get kind of sludgy and chunky. You move to the extreme high registers, that's going to get kind of thin and tinny. But within a range of at least uh, half an octave on either side of that chord, it can sound really cool and sounds reasonably like that chord being somewhat naturally played up and down on whatever the original keyboard or recording was. So if we take that and we take this C minor 7th chord, we can then take that and say they played the key, assigned to the key C, played it, we'd get this. And then they moved it up to E flat. Well, then we'd get that chord sampled up to E flat for an E flat minor 7th chord. Well, then if we wanted, we could continue up in whole steps. So we go up again, we get an F minor 7th chord. And then up one more time, we get a G minor 7th chord. Now this is a really cool sound because what it's doing is we're getting a chord, especially that E flat in the middle there, that may or may not fall within our original diatonic key or within the suggested original diatonic key of our first chord. So... With this C minor 7, if we went up to E flat, normally we would have E flat, G, B flat, and D. The thing is, though, to my ears and to the original style, that, that doesn't sound quite authentic or, or just as cool. It's like... Mm, yeah, you know, it's, it's okay. It's not great. But... With that sampler trick, we're just, again, moving these chords in parallel. What we have is that that C minor 7th chord, when that goes to the E flat minor 7th, it sticks out now because we have this new G flat that is not diatonic to C minor. And now we're going to go to this F minor 7 and to this G minor, which now sounds interesting in a way that it wouldn't if that E flat wasn't altered, because now we're back to this G natural again, and now we have this D natural again that was flat as well in the E flat minor 7. So we string all those together, that progression, which we can now call something like 1, flat 3, 4, 5, all minor 7th chords, we get something that sounds like a PlayStation era, late 90s, early 2000s, jungle track. So we get... Now, the last thing we can do to make that a little bit more interesting is throwing in one more um, transition chord right before we go back to one again. And for this, we're going to use the two chord, same thing, it's minor seven, here on the last beat of 
what would have been um, the last bar of the fourth chord. So we're going to go. Like that. And we can even take that and we can kind of make an interesting texture out of it. So we can go. Just like that. One of the things that makes this progression so interesting is that it's what we call a non-functional harmonic progression. There's no circle of fifths to speak of that we normally associate with uh, diatonic major and minor, minor harmonic progressions. And there's no dominant chord pulling us back to the tonic. So for example, if this were a functional harmonic progression or even somewhat functional diatonic harmonic progression, we might have our C minor here, C minor seven, and then we'd go to this E major seven within the diatonic chords of C minor. And then we could go to this F minor seven. And then if we were to make this functional, we'd go to this G major dominant seven, which would then have us go back to, or to extend it, we could go. But instead of doing that, we have all minor seventh chords going from one to the other, so that by the time we get to this G minor seven, even though its root is the five of C minor seven, we don't really hear it as a dominant chord or pulling us back to the tonic. We just hear it as the chord we'd stop on before we go back to C minor seven. And that's really cool because then it just, we can just repeat this loop that makes it sound like we're going up over and over again. And we go up again and it just keeps going with no real sense of needing to resolve or come to any point of rest. It just keeps going back to the beginning. So that's really cool. And that's why it works so well in these kind of hypnotic or atmospheric tracks because it doesn't need to go anywhere. It's just this ethereal, seemingly never-ending sound that seems like it could go on forever. And I think that's pretty cool. So if you're ever wondering how to get that sound of those parallel chords over a breakbeat or something that sounds like German bass or jungle, that's how you do it. Or it's a starting point at least. There's a lot of different places you can go with it, but that is one way to do it. So uh, I hope you enjoy that, you use it, and have a great day.